Hello and welcome my partners in crime, welcome back to Murder and Lies for another true crime case. Now, before we do anything else, you can hit the subscribe button, button, hit the um, like button and hit the bell button so you can come and see what's coming up next and um, follow us, that'd be really, really great. Just want a quick mention that you have, there's a new channel starting, it's called Straight Talk with Christina and I'm going to leave the links um, in the description box for you to look at all the channels that we do. Very interactive channel that's going to be, so I hope to see you there. Now, let's get straight on with this case. Now, this case is a very disturbing case, I think. I think it's a um, tragic, awful, disgusting, disgraceful, bloody terrible case, if you want to put it that way. This case is about an eight-week-old baby that was <laughs> murdered. And we can... I can say murdered because that's what it is, but as you come down the line, you'll see that I'm not really allowed to say murdered because that's not what they was actually bloody charged for. But anyway, the case is uh, Amina Faye Johnson case and she was eight weeks old and she died in um, April 2019 and she died at the hands of her mother and her father. And um, she had over 65, I think, broken bones in her body. Um, it was just terrible. She had 41 fractures to her ribs and 24 fractures to her limbs. At the time of her death, that's what they found. It turns out they looked like there was about seven separate incidents that caused these injuries to this eight week old child by these pair of people that the police are not this is like, I'm just going to give you the overview of this case before I really go into it. The police tried everything, right? So give it to the police. They tried everything. And they was charged, this pair, this horrible, nasty people, with murder of this child. But because of our laws, and, you know, I, they ended up, they wasn't charged with that at all, right? They they wasn't and we'll go into what they were charged with but anyway the parents of this eight week old beautiful little girl you'll see photos of her and um you know and I, I want you to take a look at this photo of this girl this baby this eight week old baby as you listen to this case because this child probably had the majority of them injuries why that photo was taken this girl was dying a slow death Anyway, listen, they fractured her femur, one of the bones, isn't it, in the leg. They fractured it. Even in an eight-week-old child, it's terrible, isn't it? It's just terrible. Anyway, the parents of her, um, as I said, she had over 60 or 65 bones broken in her body. They were found guilty of causing and allowing her to suffer serious harm. Now... I've said about serious harm before because it can come under the section, you know, of Offences Against the Persons Act. Because they couldn't do them for murder or manslaughter, this was the next best thing. But I still don't understand why the sentences were so low, and as we'll go into this in a little while, because the judge had options with that to, I think, give longer, right? To give longer than he did. I think he wanted to, but they would have probably took it to appeal and won, and they always do, don't they? Anyway, during the police interview, this Naomi Johnson was the mother, this 24-year-old, and Benjamin O'Shea, uh, 26, claims that para paramedics injured her. Uh, what happened was, on that morning, um, probably after the last, I don't know, it wasn't beating because there was no external bruises so it was either twisting stretching shaking um that caused it which doesn't show bruising right it doesn't show bruising and this is how this pair got along away with it actually probably for the entire time of this child's life so you could actually say that he knew what he was doing really but anyway the um probably the last attack on her caused her then to um, suffer fatal injuries. 
and they rang the ambulance who came out and has of course tried to resuscitate this child and um, and I've said before when you are trying to resuscitate someone whether they're an adult or a child that you can break ribs but they tried to say that this total amount of injuries to this child was caused by that. That was proven under post mortem that that couldn't have happened. So, I mean, at first they thought the death was, you know, uh, cot death and stuff, but it was soon found out under post mortem once they scanned that body of the injuries. And the, the, the thing is, even with a child of eight weeks, they can tell whether the injuries are new or they're old because some of these injuries were starting to heal but and that's how they could tell it's probably about seven different instances of attacks on this child so after this O'Shea tried to blame the paramedics and everyone else he then tried to blame the mother this Naomi and you can see her in this black scarf around her head uh, you know, anyway, he tried to blame her, she tried to blame paramedics, all of a sudden they feel guilt, you know, because they've now been caught. And um, it was quite obvious to the police, and the police said, no, I'm going to play you now a short clip um, from the, this court case, or the after, you know, when the judge came back and the, the police was talking about this case. I think there was another child involved in this, but in any child cases, you may have had one child injured, so that wouldn't have been put out. This child's name was been put out because she's deceased. The other child, because when you see this police interview, even I thought, why is she talking about multiple children, like two children? Because in this case, there was a second child which can't be named and that would be for her own you know privacy and stuff or their own privacy and um but there was two children here that were probably you know neglected and um abused and cruelty was acted out on both i feel but in this case we can only talk about the one the one that's been named and this was the eight week old baby uh amina Fay. so have a look at this clip and then we'll come back and um, <laughs> go into it in a little bit more detail. Good afternoon. I'm Detective Inspector Melanie Presley. Firstly, I'd like to say that no jail term will ever be worth the life of baby Amina Fay. It is difficult to speak of justice in a case like this. However, I hope that today's sentence is a clear message that these children mattered and those who think they can get away with inflicting such abuse will be punished. This is a truly heartbreaking case that has touched all of us who have worked on bringing O'Shea and Johnson before the court for their monstrous crimes. Children depend on adults, and the children in this case were sorely betrayed by O'Shea and Johnson in the most tragic of ways. In the morning of Friday the 26th of April 2019, O'Shea and Johnson called 999 after Amina Fay collapsed at their home address. Paramedics arrived on scene in minutes and immediately began attempts to save Amina Fay's life. But despite their best efforts, she sadly died at the scene. There were no observable injuries and the cause of her death was originally thought to be sudden unexpected death, unexplained death in infants. That was until the post-mortem x-rays revealed a litany of injuries Amina Fay had sustained in her short eight-week life. In eight weeks of life, Amina Fay suffered an unimaginable number of injuries. Amina Fay was found to have over 65 fractured bones in her body, including every rib and every limb. The trauma she endured in her short life is impossible to comprehend. Her injuries are a catalogue of the most despicable abuse. This trial has heard a complex medical evidence and various points of law, but at the heart of this case are two children. Two children that my team and I have worked tirelessly to get justice for. And it is them that I'm thinking of today. 
of inspector, can I ask how harrowing a case was this to be involved in? It was very, very difficult um, reading the um, abuse suffered by Amina, uh, the degree of her injuries, including twisting, pulling, uh, fractures, re-fractures. And Professor Mangum reported that the fractures would have occurred on at least seven occasions. Uh, so one of the most traumatic events, investigations, that me and my team have been involved in. Was there any remorse shown by either defendant at any point in your questioning of them? No, um, no remorse. Um, Mr O'Shea is a very complex character. He, in our team, we described him as a Walter Mitty type character, portrayed himself as ex-army, ex-military, um, and showed no remorse. He was trying effort, uh, continuously to lay the blame at uh, Miss Johnson. And Miss Johnson um, blamed the inoculations, and then we proved that they had no part to play. And then she blamed the paramedics, that they must have caused the fractures. And then we were able to show that the injuries had healed, so therefore they were not down to CPR. So no, no remorse. Can you tell us a bit about the challenges that it's faced? Yes, it was very, very difficult. Um, it was investigated as a homicide. Both parents were arrested for murder, we strongly believed, and um, looked at all avenues of investigation to bring them to justice for murder. Unfortunately, through uh, not through want of trying and pursuing all inquiries, um, we were unable to ascertain her cause of death and therefore we were unable to charge with murder. Um, Section 5, um, causing serious injury, was the only um, alternate charge that we could allow. And I am pleased that the judge has taken the seriousness of the injuries into account in sentencing. Thank you. So this O'Shea, this former, <laughs> what he says, they found Texas, you see, because he was just an idiot, this man. Absolute idiot. You can tell by looking at him as a bloody idiot. And to do this to a child is an idiot. But he tried to betray himself as this ex-army. He told people that he'd been in Afghanistan, that he'd served in Afghanistan, and that he hadn't. He was in the army reserves, and I bet he weren't in there for long. I bet he wasn't. I mean, absolutely mad this man is. This is the lying this, this man is, to try and blame people for the death of his child, to try and blame people for what he's done to this child, to get away with it, to lie about being in the forces, to have actually served his bloody country and done anything that would be any benefit to any society. This is what this man tried to portray, how good he was, perfect he was. Bullshit. It's all bullshit. The man never done anything in his life never done anything in his life he had a previous girlfriend and he was already under investigation with that relationship for shaking her child I think he'd been cautioned for that there was something going on with that then he went on and he didn't tell this girl this girl didn't know would she have cared I don't know don't think so because she allowed this to go on really and tried to you know <laughs> didn't stop it did she so this man was already known to be an abuser of children. He's already known to have attacked children to shake babies. He had no care and these people had certainly no remorse. Now these injuries were caused and the coroner really believes these injuries were caused by him um, really squeezing, pulling, twisting this child's body, shaking, anything he could do to break bones, to inflict pain, to inflict serious harm. This man did it to this eight week old child. That's what he did. This beautiful child who had no way of telling anybody what was going on. She had a mother that really didn't give a shit, did she? Because that's why she's in prison as well. Right? This child must have been in terrible pain, terrible pain. It's absolutely a disgrace, I think. It's a disgrace that we couldn't get them for murder. And I know the police 
have tried, right? I know they have. But we have laws in this country, absolutely bloody ridiculous really, to say that they couldn't do them for murder because they didn't know how this child had died. Who caused it? Well, we know one of them two did cause it. What, an eight-week-old eight eight week baby is not going to injure themselves, are they? They're just not. They're not. I don't understand. I, I mean, you know, have they, these people got off lightly? Absolutely. These people are murderers, right? They're murderers. That's what they are. But in this country, our laws are becoming so bloody ridiculous that these people are getting away with murder. This child had no one. Had no one. Listen, we've had kids black and blue, haven't we? We've had a few cases lately come out in this country, you know, blame COVID, lock them up. You know, they're all locked up. They can't help it. You know, it was their background or it was this or it was that. No, these people are killing innocent children. Not just killing them, torturing them. This girl, baby, eight week old, would have been tortured to twist someone, to break someone's femur, to give 60 injuries, broken bones. Every rib in this child's body was broke, fractured. Every bone, the femur bone, one of the most strongest bones in the body, even in a baby. I mean, the pain that this child must have been in is absolutely unbelievable. It really is. So you've got two people here, a 24-year-old and a 26-year-old, that thinks it's okay to abuse children in this way. And they say justice has been served now. You know, she's got justice. This is not justice for... Amina Fay. It's not. What deterrent is it that we're telling people that are effectively hitting these kids, killing these kids, to give them, what, eight years or seven years and ten years? Listen, they'll be under 40 when they get out. He's going to meet someone else. He's already been spoken about for the first girlfriend for shaking a child. He's murdered this one. What makes him different at 40? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, listen, there isn't a lot on this case because this, case, this child didn't live long. What have you done the last eight weeks? That's how quick it is, this child's life. Eight weeks. That's it, gone. Just gone. And, you know, really, okay, well, they're going to go to prison. And you know what? They're probably going to have such a terrible time in prison, which is probably makes up for their lack of sentencing that they got. But this time, it's not the police. It's not the police, and it's not really even the cause. It's a bloody system, isn't it? You can't even blame the social workers in this one because this man knew what to do not to leave bruises. This child just suffered day in and day out for the whole eight weeks of her life. That was it. And this pair come from London, have no excuses, no excuses there for what they've done. There's no excuse for anyone that kills any child, does anything to a child. These people are just shit, really. And, you know, really, the abuse that this child suffered, it's just shocking to me. And it was shocking to the police, and it was shocking to the judge. It really was. Now, the judge was uh, Nigel Peters, QC, and he sentenced um, at the Inner uh, Court of London. And he says that, sadly, this is yet another harrowing case of parents abusing and being, being cruel to their child. He added, he says, there is no doubt in this case of the highest seriousness in the terms of cruelty to a child in the terms of these injuries. So I suppose my question is to you, if that's the judge's case, 
Why do these people get such low sentencing? Right? Why? So anyway, I'm, I'm going to have to leave that question up to you. Do, you. do you really think the sentence is enough? No, because you've got to think this child, really, who had various injuries all over her body. I think nearly every bone in her body had some sort of injury to it. And she had these 60 or 65 fractures across her body. This tiny eight-week-old child. Um, you know, and I think it was her right thigh bone, they said, um, which could only have been caused, this damage or this break to this thigh bone, by a brutal attack. Because that's how strong that thigh bone is to break. A brutal attack. <sighs> So, as I said, he done it in a way, or they done it in a way, that there was no physical, outside physical bruising. Or if there was, it was hidden. Right? It was just, um, I just you know. <laughs> so listen, they, this medical expert, they concluded that the uh, limbs, bones, um, had been caused over the last several, over several occasions while her ribs fractures had been a sustained in at least two incidents. So the whole body was broken, really, and that was broken over seven separate incidents. The ribs, every rib in her body had been broken in two separate occasions. And they can tell that because these people are so stupid, right, that they don't understand that when they do an autopsy on a child because they have to because of the unexplained death and that's what it would have classed as at the beginning because this does happen right children sometimes just you put them to bed and they do not wake up this, that happens that's what they thought happened here because there was no red flags from anywhere else at that time and her body was unbruised and untouched until the post-mortem x-ray showed the entire damage to that child's skeleton and the horrendous injuries that she suffered. These terrible injuries to her entire skeleton body, that's when they knew then that these people were killers, really. And this case then took on a life of its own. And um, the conclusion is very low sentence for them. So anyway, you know what to do. You can thumbs up if you've liked this. You can hit the um, bell button. You can hit the subscribe button. You can leave me comments. I want to know what you think about this case because it's a terrible case. And you can catch me up. And we'll be talking about this more in some point down the line when I um, in our new channel which you're going to find in the description as well called um, Straight Talk with Christina. Now you can imagine um, I try and make my cases about these victims so I try and hold myself back. Uh, I won't be holding back in my other channel. So thanks for watching. Till the next time. Bye bye.